talking nukes here. It's been 40 years. Why is the U.S. again building a nuclear warhead? Are our tensions really that much higher? Should Americans be concerned? You know, the, the tensions really aren't any higher than they, they have ever been. I mean, that, that, that always kind of goes up and down based on geopolitical conditions at any given moment, which, you know, can change in the drop of a hat, as you know well, from, from the stuff that you cover. Uh, but the fact that, that it's been 40 years since we've had any new ones, uh, you know, really is indicative of that it's probably a little overdue that we can get it just to have nuclear uh, confidence that the, that the devices will function, sh God forbid, should they ever be needed, or that they don't malfunction, you know, even in the silos or in the submarines. So it's appropriate. I mean, when you're talking 40 years, that's a long time, uh, you know, and none, of course, none of these have been tested. So it's it's difficult to, you know, say with complete certainty that everything is good to go in there. But anytime you get things that are at old, they need to be modernized. So I think that's appropriate. Hey, well, you, you mentioned the fact uh, that, that these are not tested, and I, and I do want to talk about that because when it comes to this new one that they're working on, Energy Department officials have said there will be no nuclear testing. Uh, you know, when you look at that, obviously, that's probably a good thing to not test. But then there's also, you know, the whole point of, well, if you don't test it, do you know if it works? I mean, is that logical? Well, I think that they can test, and I'm sure they will test the device itself and, and the, the missiles and, and everything that goes along with it, all the mechanical parts. They just won't get the actual fusion uh, to go in there. That will be done on computers, and I assure you they will do significant uh, computer testing right there, which is quite sophisticated. Uh, but, yeah, the, the, the cost of actually going all the way through with the nuclear test, I don't think it's necessary. I think our technological capabilities and, and experience in these issues is, is certainly good enough. Uh, and this is only going to be something that's going to be added to the arsenal and probably as you retire other ones. So there's not going to be any degradation in capability at any point, I don't believe. You know, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, history shows us that the government has told us before things will not happen or have not happened. And we know that's not always the case. Do you think it's possible a nuclear test will eventually happen? You know, I, I don't think so, because that's not something you can hide. And, you know, I mean, literally, there there's devices all around the world that could, could pick that up, and, and I just don't think you could get by with that. And the cost politically uh, would be much, much higher than any potential gain we could get from doing something like that and claiming one thing and doing a different, which, you know, unfortunately, as you say, happens with more frequency than I'm comfortable with. But I don't think we could do this time because you couldn't get away with it. And right now, which country poses the biggest nuclear threat to the U.S. specifically? <laughs> well, I mean, depending on how you want to look at it, sometimes we're our own worst enemy because we are provocative in some of these areas unnecessarily. Uh, but, but the real issue right now is nobody because nobody wants to use a nuclear weapon. Everybody has nuclear weapons for deterrence so that no one can conventionally attack them. And that's the same issue here, whether you're talking Russia, United States, France, uh, Great Britain, uh, all of these nations uh, don't want to use their nuclear weapons because they don't want anything coming back uh, on them. You know, the whole mutually assured destruction. And I think that's a good, healthy thing. And we need to make sure that deterrence remains intact. Absolutely. So, so you know, you mentioned those countries. We know Russia, Iran, uh, China, which nation do you think, how big right now is the current worldwide threat? Is it any bigger now than it was, say, 10, 20 years ago? Well, Iran doesn't have a nuclear weapons program, at least not at this point. So they're actually not part of that club. Uh, but, yeah, I do absolutely think that the risk is, is higher now than it has been in a long time because, you know, you have, for example, Macron and, and some others in, in Poland talking about potentially sending troops into Ukraine, you know, if, if they start faltering there. That's a, one of the possibilities. And any time you get Western troops potentially engaging with Russian troops, then there's always that possibility of miscalculation, that, that Russia could choose to use a tactical nuclear weapon, for example, uh, or any kind of nuclear weapon. Likewise, in the Indo-Pacific, there's all this talk about, uh, you know, China going to war against to try to retake Taiwan, and would the U.S. fight them in the in the process of doing so? And, and there's a lot of people who want to say, yeah, we would fight China over that. And then anytime you have conventional forces between two nuclear powers fighting, there is the extreme chance that this could go nuclear from one direction or another. And that is one of the reasons I'm so against that, uh, you know, fighting China over Taiwan.